personnel, right? It's going to be a challenge. Um, but with knowledge, they can start to change the way in which they behave and manage themselves, and then, and then how you manage as a vendor, how you manage them as well. Okay. Now, this is a ugly distribution. I, you know, when I thought, wow, you know, I'm a math guy. If it's ugly, tough luck. Right? Is that a pretty graph? Anybody think that's a pretty graph? If you do, raise your hand. Yeah, we do bad taste in graphs. <laughs> <laughs> That is like the ugliest graph I've ever seen. How many think it's an ugly graph? Okay, I'm going to tell you a trick about public speaking. If you have people raise their hand, they're less likely to fall asleep on you. <laughs> you ever thought about that? You should raise your hand when the mic blows down. These things should wake up a little bit. Works great. And basically, it makes your mic move around as well. Okay, so let's just take this graph. And we say on the left hand side, we have a low recovery rate. On the right hand side, we have a high recovery rate, and we talked about early stage default. Let's change our tactics. Okay, maybe we use the same tactic we've always used in the middle bucket, maybe we have a completely different tactic on the high bucket. Instead of skipping it as early as we do, maybe we just need to run it a lot more times because that then cars in the garage. Okay, uh, let's just skip past that. Now, let's talk about agencies and drivers and how. Uh, this information can be used by them. And by the way, I've built information. I own a company that sells product to agencies. They will have this information, and they will get it as a part of our product. So know that as a lender or a forwarder, it is going to be impacting you at some point in time, so just know that. But here's how an agency can change their behavior to make themselves more popular. Okay? They have a certain amount of time. If I have 30 drivers, if I have 50 drivers, if I have 100 drivers, it doesn't matter how many drivers I have, I have X hours, okay, equates to hours. And if I have those hours and I treat all assignments equally, well, I'm going to have a certain outcome, right? If I use the prediction of my recovery rate to alter how I use my hours, and I take hours from the low recovery potential and I move them to the high recovery potential, Guess what? What do you think that one's going to be? More cars. Period. I can almost just say period and stop talking. Probably do better, but I'm not going to. Uh, net result: more cars, better service. Okay. I think some of you guys are going, okay. How do you? What do you do? What is this guy doing? He's up here talking, and he's talking about probabilities and math and time allocation and all this junk. How many of you guys have heard any of this before? Okay. Now you're going to do it. Hypothesis one. Okay. How many of you guys talk in terms of hypotheses? Any of you? Perfect. Right? You're talking to your kid. You go, my hypothesis is you have not done your homework. Probability of being right, 98%. Okay, hypothesis one. If a borrower is a renter and can't make their car payments, is it possible that they're having difficulty making their rental payments? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And if they're having difficulty making their rental payments, and that's the address you have on file, it is gonna be more difficult to recover because it's not there, right? Simple hypothesis, collect the right data, have the right numbers, analyze it properly, and now I have a prediction. Hypothesis two, how badly does the borrower depend on that vehicle? Okay, I can tell you how far you have to commute from any location in the United States to get to major employment. I can tell you how far you have to commute from any location to get to retail employment. How far you have to travel, you think that has an impact on whether or not they need or depend upon that car? You think it has a potential to have an impact on predictability of recovery? Two reasons why it has a predictable, more useful for predicting recovery. One is, if they have to commute a long ways, their car is not stationary as often. Right? If their car's not stationary, it's really hard to pick up. The second element to it is, is their dependency upon it is higher, they're more likely to hide it. Okay? 
it's kind of funny because I've only been in this industry for six months. And it's amazing. It's a cynical industry. You guys all believe that every single defaulted borrower out there whose car you weren't able to collect is hiding it. That is a shitload of hidden cars. Okay, that is, that, I mean, think about that is a huge number of cars hiding. It's probably, it, it, it just cracks me up because the probability of that is really low. So, sorry. Uh, you know, so, Analyst guys, humor is really off too. It, so if, if you don't get it, tough luck. Go have fun somewhere else. Uh, I, I learned a long time ago. I'm going to do a presentation. I'm going to entertain myself. And if you laugh with me, we're good. If you don't laugh with me, tough luck. I don't care. Okay. Hypothesis three: Who is your borrower? Really? This is an is. We're talking about the is that Bill Clinton brought into the Supreme Court. Is. What the hell is that? Anyway, I don't know why I threw that in there. Um, <laughs> higher crime areas will most likely have a more difficult time recovering. Because who is that borrower, really? Okay, those are the people who hide. Right? They're going, okay, I got a game to this. I'm going to leverage it. Right? If I can keep this vehicle out here, shoot, you know what? Shock the crap out of me. 35% recovery rate? 35%, you know how many freaking vehicles are out there running around that nobody's paying for? That is amazing. I, I was shocked, a little shocked. Uh, less shocked now, <laughs> getting used to it. Um, the bottom line is, those who have information will recover more vehicles. Those who change their practices using information will have a better relationship with their vendors and then will collect more vehicles as well. Because a lender who says, hey, agency, instead of asking me to run that 15% probability address 500 times, and I'm going to geolocate to make sure that you hit that address every single freaking time, versus the lender that says, hit it once, hit it twice, good, let's go on, let's move it, let's remove it, so that you can use your resources to the best of my ability, that client's going to get more attention from the agency, because it's more profitable business. The lender that says, no, no, you run it, run it, run it, run it, run it, regardless of the probability, is going to lose the attention of that agency and eventually collect less people. Okay. So bottom line, it's called predictive um, Anyway, <coughs> the yellow brick road, the path that all of us want to take because it leads to some crazy ass place. Uh, early adopters, they take advantage and they reap the benefits. <coughs> It's not a if, it's, it will happen. It is happening. The middle and late stage, you go, shit, this sucks. We're getting adversely picked on because, hey, we're getting lower recovery rates, we're getting nobody's attention. I call the agency and they, they, they go, yeah. You can do that and get home if you want to. Uh, I don't have a patent on that. Um, and then eventually, everybody's doing it. It's the path it always takes. The choice is when. Uh, the next zero to 60 roadmap today, I was for useful, yes, useful, yes. What am I going to do with it? My agencies get it when they're using my software. Okay, uh, lenders, owners, they can purchase it if they want, I don't care. Uh, and you heard about my history, so I don't need to be there. Why I'm here again, I keep asking myself that question, I don't know. Uh, I will be, in the beginning of 2018, putting together a lender consortium okay, of early stage default. And by doing that, two things happen. One is if you're in that consortium, you get to score. Secondary effect of that is we can build better models together. And if we build better models together, you get more vehicles back. It's simple. That's what we did at CoreLogic. That's what I did at CoreLogic. That's why CoreLogic is where it is today. It's part of it, not all of it. And that's what I'm doing. Okay. Um, what else? Yeah, lender data. Oh, here's just some basic ideas from the consortium. This is what we did for the major lenders as well. When we put the consortium together, to know how well you're doing 
compared to your peers without knowing who your peers are? How many of you guys would like to know that and learn it? You don't care. You really don't care? Come on, I know you're a lender. You raised your hand earlier. You don't care how you're doing compared to your competitor? Okay, see, it's just, it's an easy, it's just this little, little promotion. Put your hand up. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay. Um, cure rates. Do you know what your cure rates are compared to your peers? Uh, how about recovery rates for uh, agencies relative to your peers in the same geography? We'd love to know. Not knowing who your competitors are per se, but knowing that your relative place compared to your competitor, you know, compared to the industry. Absolutely. This is information that I can't believe this industry doesn't have. You know, it's shocking. But anyway, and by the way, it all just gets better from there. These are the types of dashboards that are just standard practice. If you're in mortgage, you're just comparing everything. Where am I? What is it? What's going on? What trends are happening? Where am I compared to the market as a whole? What's going on? What's happening? And if I don't know that, how in the heck am I making good decisions? If I make a change and, and I have to wait six months to say, hey, wow, my default rate's going you know, my recovery rate just went up 4% off that change. You know, it's, it's awful. Anyway, uh, that's that. Questions, comments? Any questions, comments, any comments? I have the data. I can help people. 